Hello everyone, how are you? Today we will be starting a new unit and it is the last unit in your IGCSE syllabus. It is about international specialization. First of all, we got to be able to define an economy. What do you think an economy is? We took it in previous units and we defined it as a place where the exchange of goods and services occurs. So you got to take into consideration it includes all the production or manufacturing and the buying and selling of the goods and services. So these two together, I call it an exchange. Now, we have to explain what international specialization is. You got to understand that, for example, when I look at olive oil, I would think of uh, Spain, I would think of Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, Greece. So mainly I would be talking about Mediterranean countries. And when I am talking about leather shoes or leather jackets, I would be thinking of Italy. So here, when I am talking about international specialization, I am talking about economies specializing in the production of goods and services they are best able to produce because they have the factors of production. Okay, so specialization, why is it important in an economy? You've got to understand that it is important because it allows an economy to produce a greater volume of their goods and services more efficiently. This is the most important thing. It therefore increases output, incomes, and living standards in an economy. Economies then trade with each other to obtain the other goods and services that they need and want. So if Spain exports its oil to Italy, then Italy will export its leather shoes to Spain. This is what we call international specialization. Why may countries change the product they specialize in? So, for example, have a look at these two images. You got to understand that, first of all, they might change because the cost of production is changing or the demand in the country is changing, or there is depletion of the natural resources, or probably they discovered more resources in the country, or probably the skills of the laborers changed in the country. When I am talking about international specialization, you got to know that each country is known for a specific product. In specialization, people are more productive because they do what they are best at. It involves the need to trade and it would require money. Economies specialize in the production of those goods and services they are best able to produce because they have the factors of production that they need in order to produce that product and trade is important because for example uh, to plant in Iceland it is very costly because they got to put greenhouses they got to have the proper temperature and heat so it would be much cheaper and better for Iceland to for example import fruits and vegetables from other countries Let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of trade. First of all, I'll start off with the advantages. First, they, there are higher levels of output benefiting from large economies of scale. Remember, they are doing what they are best at, so they produce in larger quantities and at a faster and a more efficient rate. And because they are increasing their production, what's happening is there is increase in employment. And when we have more job opportunities, there is more income. And when there is more income, the government is capable of taxing the people and therefore it will generate more government revenue. Also, this would lead to economic growth in the country and better standards of living for the people of the country. 
Finally, opportunities for increased international trade because they are producing a lot of that particular product, they are capable of exporting more and this would affect their balance of trade. Okay, so remember, benefiting from large economies of scale, they will have wide variety of goods and services and competition. On the other hand, let's have a look at the disadvantages. First of all, structural unemployment might occur as a country becomes more specialized. So they are only producing particular goods and the people that are not capable of uh, joining that domain, they will unfortunately be left unemployed. Also, there is the risk of over-specialization and relying on other countries to get whatever they are missing out on. And because we are only producing what we are good at, the choices for the consumer might be limited in the country itself. The fourth one would be the risk of over-exploitation of resources. So this would lead to depletion of resources. They used all the resources of the country. Remember this also, uh, it might create negative externalities such as pollution in the country. Finally, an over-reliance on other countries to supply essential goods and services. So here, you got to understand that this would increase the gap between the rich and poor since the developed economies will dominate the global demand for natural countries, uh, sorry, natural resources. There is one thing called absolute and comparative advantage. When I am talking about Let's have a look at this diagram first, and then we will be talking about this one. So here I'm talking about average cost per unit is $100, and here the average cost per unit is for country B, $130. Which country do you think needs to specialize uh, uh, in the production of this good? Is it country A or country B? Where do we have a lower average cost? It would be in country A, a lower average cost. So here I would say country A has an absolute advantage in the production of a product when it can produce that product at a much lower cost per unit than any other country is able to do so. So here at that point, I will advise country B to stop producing whatever they are producing and it is better and cheaper for them to import from country A. This is where we will learn that when a country imports from other countries, it's not necessarily bad. Now, let's have a look at the other diagram. Here, I'm talking about a, a country X and country Y. To produce 100 more cars, country X must give up 4,000 televisions. Whereas here, to produce 100 more cars, country Y must give up 7,000 televisions. So I would say a country has a comparative advantage, comparative advantage in the production of a product relative to other countries when its opportunity cost of producing that product is lower than in any other country. Let's have a look at absolute and comparative advantage using numbers. First of all, I would start off by explaining absolute advantage. As you can see, we're doing trade between two countries, Kenya and Hungary. Um, we're talking about two different products. It's either uh, horticulture products or machines. Now, if I take a look at the numbers, I can see that Kenya has uh, is better at the production of um, horticulture products than Hungary and Hungary on the other hand is better off producing machines than Kenya so I would say a country has an absolute advantage in producing a product if it can producing produce it using fewer resources than other countries so in that example Kenya has an absolute advantage in producing the horticultural product while Hungary has an absolute advantage in producing machinery. So what are we supposed to do here? Um, 
Kenya should be exporting horticultural products to Hungary and Kenya should be importing machines from Hungary. So in general, by specializing and trading, the countries improve the international allocation of resources. So again, when I am talking about countries importing from each other, keep in mind that this is not a bad thing. Now, if I move to competitive advantage, let us see what that means. So if I take a look at this example, I see that Germany, according to the numbers that I have, is better off producing both cars and chemicals than Italy. Okay, so it is on competitive advantage rather than absolute advantage that most of international trade is based. A country is said to have a competitive advantage in producing a product if it can produce it at a lower opportunity cost. Competitive advantage explains how two countries can mutually benefit from international trade even if one is better at producing all products than the other country. And in this case, as we said before, it is Germany. So Germany here can make four times as many cars as Italy, but only twice as many chemicals. So the opportunity cost of producing one car is lower in Germany than in Italy. It is 100 chemicals in Germany, whereas in Italy it is 200 chemicals. So um, Germany's competitive advantage lies in cars. While Italy has an absolute advantage, disadvantage in producing both products, it has a competitive advantage in making chemicals. Um, Let's see how its opportunity cost of making one unit of chemicals is 1 over 200 of a car, whereas it is 1 over 100 of a car in Germany. So, as a conclusion, what I would be saying here is Germany should specialize in making cars and Italy should concentrate on producing chemicals. So, in other words, Germany should export cars to Italy and import chemicals from Italy. And Italy, on the other hand, should export chemicals and import cars. I would like to highlight some misconceptions. There is a difference between specialization on a national level, so I'm talking about the country itself, and specialization of a labor in a firm. So here, remember, national level, I'm talking about country specializing in production of certain goods and services. And here I would be talking about the laborers working in a firm. They have different specialization. But at the end of the day, specialization as a term, it means you are uh, doing or producing what you are best at and in both scenarios it would lead to an increase in efficiency and faster production that would be it for today thank you very much have a lovely day